Well, hey, everybody, Tom Miller here with my teammate, Long Waters, and we are on challenge day number nine. So if this is your first day listening to us, no worries. You can go back and you can watch uh, all of the first eight days on our YouTube page at uh, Dr. Tom Miller, or you can go to our podcast and listen. That's on the Principal's Office podcast. Uh, you can listen to all the previous days. All right. So but if you're hanging there with us, congratulations, you know, day nine. And um, hopefully at this point. You have taken the time uh, to do a couple of things. Number one is that is that you bought the book. So the book is available right now. You can buy it on Amazon uh, right now. And they actually have it at this time. It's a President's Day. So uh, it's still it's still on, on sale as the top release in the charter school. So congratulations on that, Lauren. And uh, so that's really exciting. So buy the book. And, and once you buy it, you need to start to read it. You need to start to read the book. And, and uh, each chapter at the end, right, there are a set of questions and some assessment questions for you to work through, which is going to help you start to create your wheel of success. Inside the book, uh, there is a link you can go to to download all of the free templates. And one of the templates is, is going to be important for this uh, day nine in our indicator nine, the effective operations management uh, capacity and uh, compliance. But you're going to have to wait to hear what that is. Um, so buy the book, read the chapter, work through the questions and 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 download your wheel of success. You can go to 10indicators.com, click the button that says uh, book, free book resources and everything that we talk about in the book, you can, you can download uh, for free. So Lauren, can you pop up? This is what your wheel will look like. Uh, when it's first brand new, and it's in the very back of the book, actually, on page, uh, is it, I think it's like 325, you can have it, 323. Yes, 323, right? Is that the last one? No, 331. So you, so, so you can download this wheel, so you have it, so you don't, you know, but the goal is to be scoring in your book, right? So every single time that you finish a chapter, you can go to page 331 and ask, uh, and uh, score it. And after you're done all of them, Lauren, what 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 might their wheel look like when they're done? Sure. So this is what a blank one would look like. And here is an example of a, a filled out one. And I just want to stop real quick, Tom, and mention um, you talked about the free bonus resources. Right next to the blank wheel at the back of your book, there's also a QR code that you can scan that will take you right to your free resources as well. Brilliant. Yes. Yes. I don't know whose idea was that, but it was it was a great idea to put the QR code nice and easy. You don't have to type in anything. Yeah. Go to the QR code, download your free resources and and, uh, you know, you can print out. We're going to there's there's multiple versions of this wheel. I think we're, we've got a nice, easy two page one. Uh, but if you bought the book, you can also get access to this great whole uh, workbook. It's a you know smaller version. It's got all the standards in it. Uh, and you can work with your team um, on this. So this is one of the one of the complimentary resources that come when when you purchase the book. Uh, you can have it, and there's a wheel inside there. So so when your wheel is all you know colored in, you'll be able to tell and look. Hey, is my wheel going to be balanced, right? Uh, or are there some areas of uh, growth which you'll say, I believe, Lauren, this is pretty much our like average scores for a lot, right? This is what we've got. Yeah. So this is our norm assessment. Over 400 uh, leaders have uh, taken it so far. You see indicator three, four, seven, and 10 are, are, are ones that are commonly uh, lower uh, than, than um, the other, the other uh, six, the other six indicators, right? But they're all important. They're all equally important because they really ensure that your organization operates smoothly. And that's what this whole indicator is about. Indicator nine, uh, Lauren's going to pop up the substandards here. There's a lot of substandards for this one, but I really think it can be summed up in, 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 in the word systems, right? Systems are, are the highway that will take your organization uh, from here to there. Every goal that you, that you have, that you're trying to create needs some sort of system that people can uh, follow. Now, there's a reason why this is indicator nine and the governance is number 10. Okay, these are the last two. They're both critically important because without a strong board uh, uh, to create uh, policies, it's the board's job to create the box, you know, the policies that everybody operates, you know, based upon. Um, some schools have giant, large, you know, boxes, right? And some schools have really tiny, tiny boxes that are hard to uh, function in. Uh, policies 
should be broad for a reason. And Lauren and I know there's some schools that don't have any policies at all because sometimes they don't you know, believe in them or whatever the situation may be. Uh, your organization has to have policies because the number one thing that a policy does is it takes the human factor out of it. Most policies are written after the emergency occurs, right? So don't try to change your policy when if you read it and you're like, oh, this policy stinks, right? You just you just use the policy until whatever crisis you're trying to to work through is 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 handled, and then and then you have your governance team uh, review and 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 rewrite the policy. Okay, it's really important that you educate your 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 team and your stakeholders on the difference between a policy broad for a reason, so you can operate under it, and a procedure, which is a system, right? A procedure is a system, and that's the management's responsibility is to ensure that there are clear procedures and systems for everybody to follow uh, based upon the policy, okay? And that's a really, really important differentiation that as a leader, you have to be able to make sure everybody understands, right? Your handbook is procedural based upon your policy manual. So it's good to have a separate policy manual from your handbook. Sometimes a lot of organizations combine everything, which you can, you just want to make sure everything is in like the same space because what Lauren and I run into is organizations that have been around for 10, 15 years. They've got you know policy manuals in Dropbox and Google Drives or here or there, and nobody knows which one's the most recent one, right? So such a so such a challenge as your organization grows is a sustained practice for uh, policies and uh, procedures being in a in a in a consistent uh, space. Anything you want to add to that just first part, Lauren, the difference between policy and procedure? No, but as I was rereading this chapter this morning, something that stuck out that you, I hear you say so often is when schools uh, call us, typically the first thing you always ask them is, well, what does your policy say? Yeah. And so just it's so important to um, keep that at the forefront and looking through every situation through the lens of what does our policy say? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. And uh, as a school leader myself, you know, right now, currently, I sometimes catch myself and go, whoa, 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 all right, we haven't even read or found the policy yet. Do we even have one? And if we don't have one, do we have a policy that maybe, you know, because our, you know, the charter school I lead is actually authorized by our school system, right? So is there, can we adopt their current, you know, policy and work you know, through that? Because we do have, we do have a, a line in our policy manual that says, you know, any policy that is not written here, you know, the school will will look to the you know authorizer. And you have, you know, you probably have, you know, a state of policies. If this is a you know charter school uh, that's you know listening in, if you're a district, you know, you have massive, massive policy manuals. So just take the time to read the policy first and then make sure that your procedure can work under that, right? That's your job as the management's job is to create the procedure. It's the board's responsibility. It's a it's a collaborative responsibility, but it's but it's their job to adopt in a policy. The board doesn't vote for a procedure, but we'll talk about that uh, tomorrow in uh, challenge day 10. So uh, you're going to want to know the hierarchy of the policy, right? So it's it starts with, you know, with, with the federal law, state law, right? Then you're going to have state uh, policies, then, then you'll have local, you know, local rules like OSHA and, um, uh, gosh, there's so, there's so many things you have to be wary of from a local perspective, your, you know, Department of uh, Transportation, and you are a business if you're a charter school, so you got to make sure you're meeting all those requirements. And then you've got your local policy. That's your, that's your school-based uh, policies that you're, you know, working under. So make sure, you know, none of your policies can, like, uh, you know, supersede the one above it, right? You, you know, you can't write a policy that's less rigid than than a state policy, right? The state policy is going to oversee um, all all of those pieces. So that's 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 the policy piece. And so here's what I was going to say: when you go when you buy the book, uh, there is a link in there that will give you a a a template to write an effective policy. The nine steps. It's also written in the book. What are the nine steps to write an effective policy? And then you can download after you buy the book, you can get a template of that and you know, utilize that with your, with your governance committee. All policies and handbooks should be reviewed every single year. And you know, January is about the time that you get your governance committee working on this. 
And, you know, I always recommend to the principals we coach is have some sort of little notebook on the side. Like what are, what are some situations this year that I didn't have a very clear, you know, policy to work towards, or what are some policies that are written in place, but they're not, nobody's following them. Right. Or, or we just out, you know, grew them, whatever they may be, there needs to be an annual review. So you can really, really tighten them up and, and, you know, make sure you can operate them. I think a great example from a charter school perspective, Lauren, that we're, you know, kind of running through is our admissions policy. In our ad ad admissions policy, there's like, timelines for like returning enrollment information it makes it really hard to operate that's more procedural right the admissions policy should be here's here's who's eligible right and here's and here's what the school will put in place but you know because it's written we have to work through those paces but it's something we're going to review and edit next year you know because otherwise it only takes you know it's one you know parent reading and say oh you didn't follow your policy and next thing you know you're in a you're in a grievance situation but ultimately, you know, you know, policies create the box that everybody works in. Some are big, some are small, some are kind of like rumbuses and all over the place. You just want consistency. And that's really, really an important part uh, of, of the policy piece. So I know that was one thing we wanted to, to address. And we just looked through the scores. There's, there's been 468 responses so far and training manuals and programs for all standing operating systems. I mean, this is really important that everybody understands, you know, uh, what are, you know, what what am I responsible for, right? What are the policies of that? And what are, you know, what's the training? Like if you're going to put someone in, in the position who's going to be their operations, you know, director or finance director or HR director, like they need to have correct training and systems and uh, processes. And also in the book, we also give you a step-by-step -step process to create a system for everything. And so you'll have access to that as well. And then you'll get the template uh, which is also um, available to you after you purchase uh, the book using the secret link and the QR code that Lauren just mentioned in the video. So go to 10indicators.com, ten, ten T-E-N indicators.com and get the book or you can go to Amazon. It's available uh, right now. It'll be hands, in your hands in two days. Um, was there another bullet, Lauren, here that we wanted to make sure we that we work through here? Uh, no, the last comment that I was going to um, mention today was this indicator specifically I want I wanted to say was um, one that we see our school leaders within our communities are um, often building by borrowing from each other. And I think that is the benefit in being a part of our um, school communities that we have formed. You know, we've got our EC collaboratives, our finance collaboratives and our executive directors. Um, all of those communities, this is something that I often will see, hey, do you have a policy for that? <laughs> or what is the policy around this? What? How are we going to interpret this new law that just got passed and create a new policy for it? Um, it's a big topic that's often within our communities that they discuss with one another. Yeah, no, your, your success is really determined or around like the people you surround yourself with. And Lauren's right, our, our inner circle mastermind communities for our exceptional children's directors, for our finance directors, and for our uh, school leaders and, and you know, um, all, the, all the principals, it's really powerful to be able to, to get the, the very practical advice immediately from somebody and get something that's working. And that's, that, that is one of the keys. I think that build, you know, uh, build and borrow is like indicator for something there. But we talk about that uh, in in the book. And, you know, some say, oh, you know, you know, I can't get to North Carolina or uh, Florida, wherever you do this. You can do that anywhere. You you can reach out to any successful school in, in your area or even not in your area and, and and ask right now. Make sure whoever you're asking and uh, responding is is good, more than good. They got to be great because <laughs> you don't want to take a policy from an organization that's constantly out of compliance. Uh, right? You want to, you know, take then and don't just Google them either. Because to, to, you know, Lauren's point, it's it's probably not working. Right. Or it's just words on paper. And so you so you definitely want to be able to 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 get a, an idea of what what the policy says. Review it with your team, go through the process that we talk about in the book, but also talk to that school leader. Okay, so what are your procedures, your mm -hmm. systematic procedures around this? And the last charter school we just visited, Endeavor Charter School, did an incredible job around their emergency plans and their systems and their practices. 
And those, those are all really important things that you can do as a leader is get out of your building, go visit other schools, high performing schools. Don't just visit any school, but the best school that you can get to. And it's going to be the best professional, uh, you know, developing experience that you've ever had. And so um, I, I want to end with, so this, this indicator says capacity and compliance, and there is one about, you know, marketing, right? And that's what that capacity is all about. How, how do you best utilize your space? Uh, how do you best, uh, um, uh, you know, make sure that you're full in capacity in terms of um, uh, human resources and your student? And, in, and it's important, there's a bullet here that says marketing plan to clearly communicate the brand and learning or organization's mission and purpose, right? So everybody's aware. And so there's a big difference. A brand is a reputation. A marketing plan is a, is a relationship, okay? And you have marketing plans for, you should have one for all of your stakeholders. That is for your student base. That is for your employees, right? Uh, and then also for your strategic partners, uh, for your board members. Everything needs a marketing plan. A goal without a plan is a wish. So it's really important that everybody's clear why does this school exist? What does it aim to do? What are the key aspects, right? So if you go to indicator two, like what are the key tenets of the education plan? And what and, and how do we, you know, define success? Like all those things uh, can help you. So when you when you get a copy of the book and then you get a copy of, you know, of the access uh, to the resources, we have a whole workbook around marketing uh, that is yours, right? You'll have access to all those tools. So it's important, this, this book that Lauren and I have worked very hard to put together, it's not just, you know, a book to read. It, is, it, it, it can actually act as, as, as your plan for each of these indicators. So make sure you take the time, invest, um, you know, in the book, come, come to our website or email us and say, I can't figure out how to get the free resources. We'll get you. Right. Um, so you can email us to reply to this, however you're watching this video. But it's really, really important that you start to think about what is it that I'm trying to create? Right. What's the end result and what's the strategy? What's the system to put those things in place so it can actually you know, get there? And I know that it's that it's working. Um, that's that's re that's really the most important. Right. What does success look like? And what is our plan uh, to get there? How, how am I communicating and sharing that plan? So that's that's indicator nine. So make sure that you've taken the um, assessment, whether it's in your book, you can take it, uh, or you've uh, taken it on the online uh, piece, which is also free for you to do. Um, and then you'll get your scores and then you you put them on your wheel and you start to see, okay, how, how well uh, is our wheel rolling here? And would the rest of your leadership team score indicator nine the same? Maybe they score differently uh, because it may exist in your head, but it doesn't mean that the most important people around you all understand what those pieces are. And it starts a conversation about school improvement, communication, and program, right? All right. So go to 10, 10, 10 indicators.com, get your book, get your wheel and get to work. So, and there's a great announcement coming in two days. Uh, so make sure that you're staying engaged because we're going to um, talk about what's the next step uh, once you have the book physically in your hands. Bye-bye.